What's going on everybody and welcome to part 35 of our machine learning tutorial series where we're talking about clustering, specifically flat clustering with the k-means algorithm. So in this tutorial we're actually going to be using this Titanic data set. I don't really know if the original, true original origin of the Titanic data set, but you can go to this link here. I'll try to remember to put it in the description. If I forget, you can go to the text-based version of this tutorial and it will be there as well. And you can also remind me and I'll, I'll put it in the description if I do forget, hopefully I won't. Now, um, I also, I've kept all the imports from the previous, like the tutorial we just did. Uh, so I kept all those there. And then I went ahead and added some of this data. Again, I probably, this will be in the text-based version. I don't think I'll, I might throw it in the description, but I might not. Um, but anyway, uh, the Titanic data set, as you might guess, contains data from the passengers on the Titanic, which sunk and all that and was a, a very emotional movie. Um, and so this is the data that is contained within that, uh, that data set. And basically this has information on what was the class of that passenger. So like first class, second class, third class. Okay, so like planes, right? First class is the, is the best. Uh, second class and third class. Also, first class was higher on the ship. They're closer to lifeboats and all that. Third class is at the bottom of the ship where things flooded first anyway. Um, so there you have that. Then you've got whether or not this passenger actually survived, their name, uh, you've got their sex, oh, ah, wrong button there. Uh, you've got their age, their siblings, so basically a number of siblings or spouses on board. You've got uh, the number of parents and children. Um, and then you've got the ticket number, which I'm not really sure that's gonna have any true value, but you've got it. You've got the fare, how much did that passenger actually pay, which will be very interesting that we'll see down the line whether or not how much they paid has any impact. We expect class to have an impact, but then the question of what about their fare after their class, uh, does that have any impact? Uh, the cabin that they stayed in, uh, which obviously is going to matter you know, depending on where that cabin was located, but it probably matters more what, what, uh, what their class was. Where they embarked from, again, that probably is just going to have more to do with how much they paid for their ticket and what their class was. If they got on a lifeboat, what lifeboat they got onto, their body identification number, and then their wherever their home or their destination was. So we have all this information, and our interest is uh, whether or not uh, we can find any insights from this data, but then also going back to our like our Amazon data analyst example, uh, we should, we're, we're assuming that at least some of this data is valuable data in determining whether or not someone would, um, would survive or die in the sinking of the Titanic. So we, we, we have this data set and this is a popular data set because people assume that these are valuable traits, uh, and, and information on some people to determine whether or not they would survive a sinking of the Titanic. Uh, and so the question is, what if we used K means and we tell K means, Hey, or any other flat clustering algorithm, but in this case, k-means, we say, hey, k-means, separate these people into two groups, and what are we gonna learn about those two groups? And the first question we can ask is, uh, hey, did they survive or not? And like, of these two groups, like, what's what's the survival rate of those two groups? Or even, even more simply, how accurate are these two groups at deciding uh, survival and, and, and death? So can we, can, is k-means going to figure out, is, is k-means basically going to separate these people into groups of survivors and, and dyers, basically. So um, that'll be an interesting thing to, to find out. So of those imports, uh, we are actually going to bring in, uh, we're going to say from sklearn import pre-processing and cross-validation. We're going to import pandas as pd, and I think that's everything we're actually going to use. So now we're going to come down, and again, if, if you don't have this, make sure you get it and put it in the directory you're working in or specify full path. Mine's in the same directory as the script I'm working on, so I can just say the name, basically. So df is going to equal pd.readxl. Is or isn't pandas just lovely. I love pandas. Anyway, titanic.xls, we read that into a data frame. We're done. We can also, let's go ahead and just real quickly, we can print out the data frame head. So we can just kind of see some of this information. And one thing I'm gonna point out and what this tutorial is about to be um, 
covering is, well, these are numbers, right? P passenger class number survived as a number. Name, not a number, but do we think the name is going to have actual, like, significance? Um, there's probably some natural language processing that we could do based on the name and determining whether or not that name is prestigious or not, but um, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> We're not going to go down that path. Next, we have sex. This is one that's a really important characteristic, yet it is not um, numerical. Uh, and basically the rest of this stuff all the way up to cabin. Again, cabin is probably pretty important, uh, but it's obviously not numerical form. Then we've got where they embark from. Again, we think that's important, but it's not numerical data. And then the destination may be important. We think it, it could be important, um, and we'd like to leave it in, but again, it's not numerical. So the question is immediately, what do you do with this data? Because the, all machine learning is going to require you to have numerical data. So, so what do you do? Well, I don't know what everyone else does, but I'll show you at least what I do <laughs> when doing this sort of thing. So, the, so generally, what you're going to do is okay. Let's let's take um, let's take the sex column. So you're going to take. You're going to take the sex column, and then what I do is I'm going to create, I'm going to take the list of the sex column, I'm going to take the set of the sex column, which is just going to be basically the unique values. And then what we're going to do is, um, so those are like the set of the sex column dot values is going to be female, male, right? That's going to be the set. So we could do the same thing with like home desk. If we just did this, these five rows, if we took the set of the home destination column, we'd actually have two values. We have St. Louis and this Chesterville, I don't know, is that Ontario or something? I don't know, I really don't know. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, must be, I don't know. Anyway, um, so, so that would take the set. And then from there, we'll just assign, we'll say, okay, female is zero, male is one, right? And we'll just keep going down the list. Like if there's five elements in the set, the first is zero, the second is one and so on. That way we assign a, a, a unique ID to the value in that column. Now, if you have a lot of values in that column though, you might find that you're getting outliers, right? And uh, as you've already seen, uh, outliers are likely to cause some trouble. So if you have, you know, a small number and then you end up doing pre-processing anyways, you'll probably be fine, but just keep that in mind. But this is how I'm going to handle uh, this column. I've, I've, honestly, I've never really looked into like how people translate um, text data into numerical data, but I'm sure people do something similar. So first what we're going to do is let's go ahead and uh, we also had a lot of no missing data in there. So we're going to fill that in as well. Uh, and there's kind of two options we have here and we'll have to see down the line which one matters, but I'm probably, I'm more inclined to actually not I'm getting ahead of myself. It's like I'm thinking I've already made my decision and I'm already disagreeing with myself and you're probably like, what the hell is this dude talking about? So first we're going to say df.drop and we're going to go ahead and drop a couple of columns. We're going to drop, uh, we're going to drop that body and then we're going to drop the name column because we, we, uh, I'm thinking, you know, the body identification number, if there's even a number there, it's going to be. I'm, I'm assuming the body identification number is for dead people. I, I don't know. I actually would pull this up really quick. Um, oh, we're not printing head anymore. Anyway, what was the error here? No, it says it's not contained. Uh, one in place equals true. And then let me print if dot head. So body nan 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 survived zero. So maybe at least the survivals that we have don't have body identification numbers. And then probably some people don't have body identification numbers because their body was never found. I'm just totally making this up on the fly though. So I'm not really confident that that's true, but I'm thinking that that's the case. So if they even have a body identification number, they probably died. And so our purpose here is to see if this data is descriptive of survivors and dyers or not. So I don't want to have that there because I feel like that would taint uh, the whole thing. So we're going to drop that. We're also going to run a, a df.convert objects, uh, convert to numeric equals true. And then we're going to do a df.fill in a, we're going to fill with zero in place equals true. I'm going to go ahead and wager that 
pandas is going to yell at me for this convert objects. Pretty sure they changed that. Uh, yeah. PD.2 numeric. Uh, unfortunately, that wants us to use like a series at a time. I don't really want to do that. I want to be able to convert the entire data frame. If you know how what the real replacement to this, because like this basically, when we say this, we're converting all of the columns to numeric. But if you try to use PD dot convert numeric or something like that, I think, yeah, PD dot two numeric, if you use that on the entire data frame, you get a problem. So I'm not really sure what the, the true correct way around that is. Uh, and it might not even be an issue in this data set, but I'm gonna throw it in there for now anyway. But if you get an error, feel free to comment that out because probably in the coming months that will be totally deprecated and removed. Okay, so we got the the data, and basically at this point we still have that like non-numerical data, so we're actually gonna handle for that now. So we're gonna say handle non-numerical data for the data frame. Oh, I'm just going to pass the data frame here. And then we're going to say the columns here are df.columns.values. Okay, so these are just the every column. And then we're going to say for column in columns. What do we want to do? Well, we're going to say the text digit vals equals, and we're just going to say um, an, empty, an empty dictionary for now. Then we're going to have a quick function here that's just going to be convert to int val. And then it's gonna say return the text digit vowels of the index that is that value. So what's gonna happen here is like I was saying, you know, let's say for female will be index zero. So this dictionary will be like zero colon, uh, or actually I'm sorry, it, it should, most likely it'll be more likely this. It'll be female colon zero, right? And then male and so on. So then converting to an int, it's gonna say, okay, we're gonna reference text digit vowels. What female, what's the value? Zero. Okay, simple as that. That's how it's going to do the conversion. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to say if the df column column dot d type um, is not equal to mp dot int int sixty four and the df uh, column dot d type does not equal mp dot float 64. If neither of those are the case, then what we're going to say is the column underscore contents is df column dot values dot to list. And then we're going to say the unique elements here, unique underscore elements equals set column contents. So it's just, we're just grabbing, like I was saying before, that's just going to give us all the unique non-repetitive uh, values there. Then we're just going to iterate through, we're going to say x equals zero, and we're going to say for unique in unique, unique elements, if that unique is not in text digit vowels, we're going to say text digit vowels unique equals x, and then we're just going to say x Oops, x plus equals one. And then we come over and then we're gonna map once, basically at this point we've, we've, we're have we we're going through each column, right? I'm pointing on the screen like you can see that. We're going through each column. Uh, we've defined this little stupid function and we've emptied out the dictionary. And then we are uh, basically asking if that column is a number or not. If it's not, uh, then we're going to convert to list, get the set of that list. We're going to take the unique elements, populate that dictionary, and then still within that if statement, right? Because we don't want to do this if, if it's not within this if statement that it's not a number. We're going to say df, um, and now let me make some space, df column, whatever that column is, is going to be equal to the list map, and then we're going to convert to int, and then we're going to apply that basically to the values within the df column. So we're basically resetting the values of df column by mapping this function here to, um, to the value that is in that column. And if you wanna know more about mapping functions, uh, you should check out the pandas tutorial and the data analysis section on pythonprogramming.net. So uh, we've done that. And then finally, at the end of this function, we simply return df. Oops. <laughs> I need more sleep or coffee or both. 
return df. Now, df is now going to equal handle non-numerical data df. And then what we're going to say is print uh, df.hit. Whew, what a doozy. Okay, so we're done. We're still getting this stupid little error if you know the solution to that. Feel free to comment below because... Although, actually, this is just a warning. Convert objects is deprecated. Interesting. Anyway, so if you know the solution to that, uh, feel free to post below and help others out, hopefully, whenever this hits the fan and no longer works. So, anyway, coming down here, as we can see, sex is one, zero, nine. Everything is converted to numbers. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so uh, that's how you can handle non-numerical data. There's probably better ways to do it. So, for example, here, um, you know, converting the column, you know, making it a list, converting to a set. Really, I mean, this is not the most inefficient code in the world. Uh, but again, if your set was very large, obviously you wouldn't want to apply this to like a text document, most likely. <laughs> um, Although I don't know any better way really to assign values to, to words, for example. I usually use this for text documents too. But anyway, there's probably a, a much more efficient method. I just don't simply know it. Anyway, uh, that's that. Now what we're going to do in the next tutorial is actually apply clustering now, flat clustering, and see the groups that it creates, and then see if those two groups are indeed survivors and non-survivors. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.